Hi, so today we're going to be making an amazing hot tub sign. So first of all, I got three pallet boards and I cut three lengths um, to whatever size I thought I wanted the, the sign to be. So this is me just cutting out the wood for the three pieces. And I've cut some backing just to hold it all together. I'm just going to drill some pilot holes and uh, then I'm going to screw it tightly together. So with this particular build, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint it before I sand it. So I'm screwing it all together and the next thing you're going to see is me um, giving it two coats of just ordinary emulsion paint, no chalk paint, nothing fancy. So this is me and I put uh, today I decided to put on my roller. It's not, not the norm, but I don't know, thought I'd mix it up a bit. So there you see me putting on my two coats of paint and I'm letting it dry outside in the sun. Once it's done, it's completely sanded. Here's the board, as you can see, underneath there. And I'm showing you that I'm using three made by Marley Craft Blanks. I've got some clay tools, a small paintbrush, some DAS um, air drying clay, some acrylic paints, different colours, some Mod Podge to seal the whole piece. And I also use wood glue, which I didn't show you at this point. And I've made myself a stencil, which says hot tub in time. So um, this is me, I'm just kind of pointing out that the board has now been sanded smooth, it's really smooth now and the reason why I painted it first was to give it that sort of rustic outdoor weather worn sort of feel. So I painted my, um, I had three palm leaves, um, I kept um, two of them intact and I cut the, the other one in half so that I could have one and a half on each side. And this is me just trying to get my sort of space and right of what way I want to do it. Um, so I'm just kind of like thinking how this is going to go because I'm going to make some clay hibiscus flowers for in between. And I want it in one corner and the other corner, opposite corners, to kind of give it a little bit of interest. So they've been painted green, but here you can see me. I'm just kind of highlighting the centres, making them a little bit lighter. Um, so they're not just all one solid green and it gives it sort of its depth and tone by doing this and uh, it makes them look better basically so I'm just kind of like putting on a light green then I'm putting a lighter green on top and here I am using a white acrylic paint pen to put the veins in and the leaf just remember when you're doing that kind of thicker down beside the, leaf, the stem that runs through the middle the stalk and um, thinner out to the edges of the leaf and they make, there you go, I'm showing you what, what I'm doing there. Sorry about the light in this frame. Um, it was a really sunny day and the sun comes and goes. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking the paper clay into lots of um, lots of different kind of ball sized pieces and rolling them up. Now a hibiscus flower has five petals um, on each one of the flowers. So I did um, 20 balls because I did... Um, two lots of flowers on each side of my board so this is me just showing you um, that I'm rolling them all into balls and putting them in, separating them into um, blocks of five. I'm getting more some more air dry clay just remember and keep your air dry clay nice and tight so that it doesn't dry up. So once I've rolled my balls you're going to take five of each one there's my little sections and you are going to um, make it into a sort of teardrop shape um, quite large I mean you can go big or, you know you can have them sort of you know average size but first of all I start by making all my five petals into teardrop shapes and I'm just molding them with my fingers kind of smoothing them down as I go um, and once I've got my five I'm going to get a clay tool but you can use like anything pointy and I'm just doing lines f down from the the um, kind of rounder edge down to the thinner edge at the bottom so I'm not touching the top edge I'm just kind of like stopping before I get there so I'm kind of half like not kind of half three quarters down and then right down at the bottom I'm going right down at the bottom at the other end and that's the whole five of my leaves done and I'm just kind of pushing it them back a little bit and kind of giving them some I'm using that like my acrylic paint pen there just to kind of like give them you know like a kind of twirl or twist at the end I'm using wood glue and what I'm going to do is, um, there's my, I'm showing you, there's my five petals and all the other balls are over at the other side. Now, this section, what I'm doing is I'm painting the palm leaves 
with um, wood glue and I'm painting them all over not too thick you don't want it to splurge out on the sides um, but you know liberal coat I'm pressing it down and I'm putting some weight on it just to make sure that it sticks the thing about wood glue is it's really got to be left overnight but you can work with it within about half an hour as long as you're not bashing it about um, so there's my other leaf and I'm just trying to work out where they want to go because remember I'm going to put my flowers sort of in between this and that's me showing you that I've turned all my other little um, balls into petals as well they're just sitting off the camera and uh, here we are now the light's not great but you can see what I'm doing I'm turning it into a flower and I'm kind of like you know making sure that I go round every edge with my little fine brush there and put more wood glue so that it all sticks down now I'm going to give this two coats of Mod Podge and a coat of varnish um, before it's at the very end but it's uh, just to make sure right from the very get go that you're making sure that you push it down not so much that I mean if you want your leaf to stick up a bit that's fine but just remember and adhere it at the other end it can have a bit of a dip and so that's my first flower done and I've kind of pushed down the center a little bit just to because I'm going to kind of roll some little thin stamens and this is me working at the other side now and I'm doing exactly the same thing I'm just getting my leaves kind of giving them a little bit of movement now I had a mold that had some other little leaves in it so I thought oh, I'll just put some of those in as well so I think I did three or four on each side of the leaves um, maybe four I can't remember so I'm just casting them um, into the mold and then pushing them out um, it's got two sections of leaves this mold I haven't actually used this mold's flowers but um, I will do there'll be a video coming up of that at some point um, so plenty of wood glue sticking them down running my paintbrush around them so that they're properly glued down and so you can see what I'm kind of doing how I'm kind of building it up now I'm kind of building it down in one corner and around and then the other kind of diagonal corner um, just to kind of like make it you know sort of some gives it interest if you put it all around the edges it'd be too much so this is me putting on my, my little leaves at this side oh no here what I'm doing is I'm rolling out my clay really thin and I'm just kind of they're not they're not too thin because it's not like you're working with ceramic here I mean you can't be too thin with it so I'm just putting on some stamens there was no right or wrong reason for this I think I put about four or five in the middle of each of my flowers and I just rolled a, a like a really thin sausage and then kind of pushed the top down to give it a kind of flat a little bit at the top and then I just stuck them into the flower you can do them as long as short as you want this is really your creative project so I mean you maybe don't want to do hibiscus flowers it's just because I was having a hot tub theme I was thinking sort of tiki hut summer um, and this actually is this one's going to be for sale so I was kind of taking my time and make sure I did a good job so I've got my hot tub in time um, stencil on now and I'm just using a makeup um, application sponge and really what I'm doing is I'm just just doing what I normally do. I mean you've seen me do many stencils it's just I haven't added plaster of Paris to this it was just as it came and so I'm going to be giving the words a little bit of sand at the end so I wasn't too concerned because sometimes when the wood is and even if you're using three planks, you maybe get a wee bit of blue through. But sometimes you don't. As far as this went, hot and tubbing was fine. But the time was a little bit not to my liking, really. But the time that I had to sand and everything else, I was quite happy. So I'm picking out my middle and weaving them out. And so that's my words done. Brilliant. And they came out just the way I was looking for them. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying some colour onto it. And now you'll be able to start seeing where I've been working here. Um, I'm adding a tiny little bit of red, a little bit of blue, so a kind of dark purpley red that I've gone for. Right, so I'm painting them in and what I'm doing is I'm painting my, thin, my paint quite thin and watery and I'm just knocking it back with a baby wipe and uh, getting down the corners, all the edges, make sure you do them. Um, you, you don't want to see bits of paper clay. Oh, very important point that I forgot to mention. I painted my my moulds with some um, some white acrylic before I started to do this and I let it dry. Sorry about that, I should have said that at the time. Um, I just didn't think you'd want to see that boring bit. 
I try and cut boring bits out of it so it's not too long for you as all and you get the general sort of gist of where I'm going with things. So that's me doing another flower over the other side and again this is me now starting to build up the colour. I'm starting to make it a little bit thicker. Um, so this is me adding some reddish sort of thing. You can see what I've got on my paper there as I'm using as a little palette. Um, that's how I'm kind of working it out and again even though when I'm putting it on thicker I'm knocking it back. Um, each time that I do that so I'm making sure that I wipe a bit off so that it's not all because the reason why you do that is so it all sits in the texture we put in and so I'm doing the other one sort of kind of ochre yellow colour and then just painting that in making sure that I go around all my edges trying to avoid the middle and the stamens and then me I'm wiping it back if your paint's quite watery in the first application it looks quite good now what I'm actually doing here is I'm using some yellow and I'm going around the centre of the pinky ones, the pink flowers I'm kind of doing, but not right out to the edges, more in amongst where the steaming is. I'm putting my yellow and that's what I'm doing there. Um, each time you see my roots, my hair, I freak out, but I've decided I'm no longer dyeing my hair. I'm just going to let it go sort of grey. I don't know. You'll probably see in two months time that I don't actually do that. But uh, I, I just feel that I just would like it to be more natural if I could. Um, so anyway, that's my hair. We're moving on from my hair now. What I've done now is I've added a little bit of ochre and a little bit of green. And I've painted in the stamens um, of my flowers. And... Uh, that's what I'm doing here as well. I'm just doing the stamens. Um, I do give you a close up so you do get to see um, how it looks. But as you can see, right, so I started with a piece of palette board, screwed my three boards together, put some batting on the back, um, painted it with two coats of emulsion paint, sanded it. Glued some wooden made by Marley Craft Blank palm leaves onto it and made some flowers out of some paper clay, painted them, added a stencil and you don't actually see this bit at the end, but at the end bit I drill two holes at the top and stick some rope through it and then I give it two coats of Mod Podge and a coat of varnish. But you get the gist at the end, I, I don't feel the need to have to, I mean your crafters, you, you know your drill, just make sure you have put the Mod Podge on because People might put this outside and you want to make sure that it's sealed and without having the paper clay on it. I would recommend they kept it in a sort of tiki hut kind of place just to keep, keep it secure. But if you've done all that too and you make something like this, you don't want to ruin your work, especially as it takes quite a lot of time. So what I'm doing now is I've got some dark grey brown and I'm running it around the edges and in between the flowers to make it that sort of not crisp sort of aged look and um, that it's been hanging out on the side uh, in the sun and it's got a little bit grubby a little bit weathered um, oh, I also add at this point in time when you see it finished I actually have sanded it so here we are this is how it looks so I've been made by Marley Lel from made by Marley if you like this video and you want to see more proper crafts then please subscribe and um, if you want to share it, share it. And I'll see you again another day for more crafts. Thank you very much.